so I was at the festival in Croatia and I was, this boy comes up to me and he was good looking and stuff and he was like we were like talking over and then we started like getting with each and I was kissing him he was like oh we need to stop and I was like why and he was like my girlfriend stood right there she was literally at the top of the stairs I was like what so he like ran up to his girlfriend and then they were like sat with each other like where our group was did she know then no she didn't have a clue. She didn't see it. But I made a TikTok about it and got like a million views, so she might have seen it by now. Like. Yeah. But so that's what you were doing, Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> here's the crack. 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 Welcome back. Talking shit and I'm drinking wine. Like and subscribe. Here's the crack. How's it going, people? Welcome back to another episode of the Here's the Crack podcast. I'm just checking the sound. It seems good. Um, we're joined today by most of the people will know you as kegs What's that we, we were actually chatting about this in the kitchen <laughs> Alicia was getting you your drink and I walked past and Alicia was in I, I stuck my head in I was like well it's crack and Alicia was like what's his actual name and I was like Why oh my god I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it's everyone and then I was like, out. oh my god Alicia, I actually don't know myself <laughs> yeah no I don't really have my name anywhere so my real name is Kahar but oh. it's spelled like C-A-T-H-A-I-R so right. I think kegs is just a lot easier you heard um, it here first Heard here first. <laughs> no, this is There's your exclusive. exclusive. Like, <laughs> but yeah, me and her were just sitting in the kitchen for like five minutes. Like, go, we went onto your Instagram and I was like, I cannot find it's nowhere. <laughs> it's literally nowhere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to walk in and be like, uh, kegs. You're like, that's not my name. <laughs> nah, everyone calls me kegs. I'm used to it. Like, Why kegs? Um, so whenever I left school, I literally went tying up by myself for like the summer, and it was my first time sort of becoming friends with people like outside of Ireland. And literally, as soon as I arrived, I realized that like not a single person from outside Ireland can say her. Like, they're all like what they're like, carter karen what and i'm like uh right so then i said to say cax because a few boys from school called me cax but then they still were like tr- struggling to say that so this girl from newcastle just called me kegs and now it's five and a half years later that's my name did people so. like actually come up and be like kegs yeah or, and do, do you use used to it now the only people that call me kegs now is sort of like my family or like my friends who i like, grew up with it's literally it. everyone, everyone else calls me kegs like yeah so. yeah i kind of want to just jump straight in so like most people will obviously know you've got your own podcast now yeah I'll just plug it right now yeah <laughs> while it's still fresh in our heads what's it called again the kegs podcast the kegs po- there we go and uh i just want to jump right in most people will know you obviously off like tiktok and stuff mm-hmm. but like i think the thing that attracts a lot of people to you is like just this kind of do what you want like let's just live life type thing and the first thing that I, I'm, I've seen a lot of your videos that have come up on the For You page and stuff but I think the first thing that i seen off yours I was like this guy is just a bit crazy was that whole frog thing oh yeah the Campbell so like you burned a hole in your arm yeah <laughs> and then you put what in it so basically I started I, went, I lived in Mexico last year right and I started working with like plant medicines, so like ayahuasca, bofu, uh, changa, which is like forms of DMT, and then I've heard of cambo as well. And then whenever I came back to Ireland, um, this like healer got in touch with me to do Reiki. Have you heard of Reiki healing? No. So Reiki healing is like you lie down and she like mo- she doesn't touch you at all; she just moves energy throughout your body. And then she basically was like, oh, "I've recently been trained in cambo," so I was like, "Yeah, I'll give it a go." Literally didn't have a clue what it was really, and she was just like, bef- "A few days before, like no drinking, no like none of that sort of stuff, like you have to sort of detox." And I walked in and she was like, right, so I lift up her sleeve and she was like, um, she just like started burning like five holes in my arm with like incense. And I was like, right, she was bas- it's basically, it's basically frog poison or like some people, some people say it's not poison, but it's like frog poison or like frog venom that they get off these like frogs in the Amazon rainforest and they like scrape it off their backs, but it's like a healing medicine. So whenever she burned the holes then she like dabs the, the sort of the poison onto your arm and literally within like, 10 seconds you're just overheating and shaking you're just start, you just start projectile vomiting it's honestly a horrific experience during it but you're like projectile vomiting for like 20 minutes um but then Gosh. after you feel unbelievable because it's, it's literally getting rid of all the toxic energy and all the toxic stuff inside your body so you can purge it all out and you like feel amazing afterwards it doesn't sound amazing it's, it's <laughs> honestly <laughs> horrific during it to prepare yourself but like it's actually you feel class after like we 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 uh <laughs> we went out we all went to manchester and before we went to manchester we all were at the like a pride and was it the pride and pinion party yeah. was the pride and pinion party 
Thomas spent most that night poking. In the bath. <laughs> That's why I know right <laughs> You would not like that. At That's all. one thing I never, I never do. I never really be sick when I'm out partying, to be uh, fair. It was, a, it was a free bar, like, so. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> free bars never really like We were sitting in it like an hour before we meant the taxi was coming from Manchester. Thomas was still in bed, and I was like, this is getting serious now. Like, me and Shay were like, we need to make an executive decision. Do we leave him here or do we go on our own? <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> did you go? That I'd go, yeah. I was like, <laughs> a wee anti sickness tablet. On his way. Do wonders, like. He was grand. Yeah. We were drinking in the airport and all. He's fine. Pretty sweet then. That, that, that was night. sweet. You see, anti sickness tablets, eh? Hey? Holy fuck. They work right. some job, like. But you, you, I know what you're like. You are probably one of the most impatient people I've ever met. So you popped it, and within about five minutes, you have to keep it like below your. You put it like below your lip. Yeah, it's but weird. like Bruno got them, and I remember saying, "Listen, I like he will not have the patience to keep this below his lip, guaranteed." <laughs> and then literally, Thomas put it below his lip. Five minutes later, I walk back in. I'm, I might just swallow this. Uh, it's not working like it's not working Isaac you need to keep it below your lip to like let it dissolve but you wouldn't be good with the whole sickness thing like I don't think I could do that that sounds awful it, it like, is, it's not a nice experience but whenever i done ayahuasca as well it, you, a lot of it is being sick so I, f- I was kind of prepared for it already well, but like what it, like what is like what happens when you do that all stuff like ayahuasca and stuff so like ayahuasca that, like? is I'd say it was the best night of my entire life Ch- and I'd say it's changed my perspective on myself, on my relationships, on my entire life, and the whole pl- well, the whole world. Honestly, um, it's like it's a psychedelic plant medicine. So you basically, I went on my own into the middle of the jungle with like all these like shaman and like loads of these like there's like forty people doing it, and you're all like camping out underneath the full moon in like a temple, and then you drink this like medicine, and then for like twelve hours, you're like tripping. Each, every single person's experience is different, right. but um, I've done it four times now on the first experience. I sort of like was tripping out a wee bit, but I was like seeing the beauty of nature whilst going through my own like childhood or like teenage traumas, even things that you wouldn't have thought was a trauma, but it's actually had a negative effect on your adult life. You go through these things and heal these things and realize why these things happen and how to overcome these things. And then it starts showing you things that you need to do in your life right now to make yourself a better person, to make yourself successful, to make yourself happy and live a love life and all this here. Mm-hmm. And then it just goes on the whole night. It's honestly, hands down, the best thing I've ever done. And is someone guiding you through this or is this um, something that you experience completely? So you're, you're completely on your own. Do- no, so there's like 40 people doing it and there's like yeah. maybe, there's one main shaman and there's like maybe four or five other people working at the ceremony. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're sort of like w- walking around looking after you, but they're also like singing songs. So like they sing, play music the whole night. So it's like, it's a really good vibe, but you're not allowed to speak. So it's, it's a completely solo journey. Um, throughout the whole night but it's, it honestly is on how did you get into this sort of thing like it's um john was so weird so i remember watching the simpsons movie years ago and i remember you know the woman with the big tits and homer's yeah. like tripping out <laughs> yes. i remember researching that and fi- trying to fi- figure out what that was because i was just intrigued by it i don't know why and i remember like finding this thing called ayahuasca and this was like years and years and years ago and then whenever i i was going to go to bali that like last winter or like asia and i was like thinking fuck i'd love to do it there because i know it's quite spiritual but then when i arrived in tulum i realized oh my god this place is really spiritual like that morning I was like thinking about, oh my God, Tulum definitely does ayahuasca here. Um, so that evening, I literally was in my barber's and my barber started telling me a story about how his best friend on ayahuasca yesterday. I was like, what the fuck? I was literally thinking about that this morning. Um, and then I just was, got it's the guy's number. It's and it's it's alignment. It's yeah, I was like, fucking, I'm going. <laughs> May as well. But what, why, why, like, why, why did you start? Like, was this always something you were interested in or was there ever, was it just you got into one thing and then one thing led to another and you were kind of doing all, you were open to doing all the stuff? Um, because I think over here has this mentality where like, that's crazy. That's- yeah, 100%. Maybe about two years ago, I start, I had like some sort of like spiritual awakening and for like ages, I was sort of focusing on like trying to make myself a better person all this here. So I was listening to loads of like podcasts and audiobooks with like Russell Brand and like all these like big people like talking about like all these things. And I heard ayahuasca mentioned so many times and how it's literally changed nearly everyone's life who's done it. Yeah. Like obviously everyone's got a different experience, but like nearly every single person I listened to said that it has a massive positive impact on your life. Like it helps like beat the ego and like helps get rid of all like self doubt, like all negative talk, all that their sort of stuff at the time. So I was like, at that time, I sort of, um, um, at the time I'd done it, I think I was going through a bit of a, a bit of an, I don't know, a bit of an identity crisis or something. And I was like struggling with getting like trolling and shit. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to see can this like help me beat that. And it did at the time. I was like, I don't give a fuck anymore after it. Yeah. You talk a lot about spirituality and the law of attraction and stuff on your Instagram. Like yeah. Why, how has that become so important to you? Do you know, tell um, us so I'd say whenever I was like, late teenage years maybe early 20s i suffered with like bad like depression and anxiety when i lived in like ireland and then obviously i started traveling and then whenever i was in ibiza in 2019 
um, I had like the spiritual awakening. I didn't even realize what was happening because like I, I was grew up like a Catholic, but I sort of had an atheist. I was I, th I was being atheist. Like I thought it was all a load of shite. And then whenever I was in Ibiza, um, I had a spiritual awakening where I was like starting to live in the moment, and I was like uncontrollably crying and like feeling just unbelievable joy and happiness. And then after that moment, I was just on social media or like watching things, and then like spiritual messages we start like going into my head and I'm like I would, why, where, how have I not like learned all this stuff before and then I started learning 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 more and more and more and just just honestly helped me learn to like love my life so do you practice like affirmations and meditation and stuff would you credit um, would you credit like law of attraction to your success now would you use those practices or do you just 100 million percent I, yeah. I, I believe if you have a positive mentality and like do positive things then you'll attract positive things into your life do you know what I mean um, but with um, what was what did you say at the end of that with your success no, but, like, but, do you think? Yeah, I, I, I suppose with the success, <laughs> I will. I don't know. I'm still working towards it, like. Um, but yeah, I do. I do practice like manifestations and stuff like that. Like yeah. I was trying maybe, say like once a month, sort of write down the goals I want to achieve and stuff like that. And with meditation and stuff, like I see when I was in Tulum, meditated every day and I loved it and it's, it's so so beneficial. But for some reason, whenever I've been back home for the past few months, I sort of lost my spiritual side. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the environment I'm in. Yeah. But when I get back to Valley, I'm so excited to get back into it all. Would you say it has anything to do with the culture in Northern Ireland, or is it? I d I've been potentially the way people are around you. You're not um, inclined to see that side of yourself. Like whereas, like as you're saying, you're excited to get back to Bali. Is the I feel like it's the environment you're in because in Bali, everyone is literally all about like spirituality yeah. and like. Well, obviously, I've not been to Bali yet, but I know that's what it's like. Um, but it's everyone's going to meditation every day and like they're all doing like all the spiritual stuff. Whereas here. Like, not many people would be doing it, if you know what I mean. Um, and, like, I don't know, it's just who you surround yourself with as well, I suppose. Because when you do say stuff like that, I know, like, the kind of... You, I think you've addressed it before. You're, like, this sort of small town mentality that people have. Like, that side of me is, like... I could not imagine myself going in with, like, 40 people in the jungle to, like, trip out. I would be like, no, no thanks, that's not for me. And, like, it might not be for people, if you know what I mean. But, like, yeah. do you feel like that's something that everybody should experience or um i would say i don't know it's a hard one because a lot of people who do ayahuasca says that you need to be called to do it um but for me i i definitely would recommend just based off my own experiences but obviously everyone's got different experiences yeah. and different views on it and um, but based off my own experiences i would say definitely but i feel like you have to be open to it as well yeah like i feel like you can't really be that skeptical of it yeah because i feel like if you be that skeptical your your like ego will fight against the medicine and it might be a bad experience yeah because i know i know one of my friends and um, tried to do it and she had it didn't have a great experience but it was because her ego wouldn't let her accept the medicine Mm -hmm. So you have to be open and like re to receiving it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. How long does it last? Um, so it's like a twelve-hour ceremony. You're not really tripping out for like twelve hours. Yeah. Like each person's different. Like I say, like for my experiences, you, I sort of only tripped out maybe at the start, but like the whole night, I was sort. I was like, I wasn't tripping. I was fully conscious of what I was doing. But like I was walking around the jungle and I was looking at like all the trees and the plants and like I could see this like they were all like creatures or living things. Like I could see like families made out of like the branches. It was so weird, but That's it was so beautiful. Weird. It was beautiful, like. Um, but yeah, it's probably know, hard to it's probably hard to describe. But in your head, you understood it. Yeah, like I get it. I, I do get it. But, but I know what you mean. I, mean, I know a small town mentality as well. But even like my mum and dad, like they're from like a wee village in County Tyrone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I say a small town mentality is quite a big thing, probably there. And the way I've described, I ask it to them. Like they they would never even like they barely even drink. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And now they're like, yeah, I'd like, they would actually like to try it. Now I feel like I've helped open their mind a wee bit. I've heard of people doing it and like bringing up memories that they didn't even like know was. Oh, honestly, it, like it does. Stuff stuff came up for me in my teenage years, and I was like, what the fuck? I did not realize that. Like yeah. I forgot that happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where would you say would be like the best place you visited? Like your favorite place outside of Mexico? I yeah. Yeah, Mexico. Um, obviously, Ibiza 2019. It was probably my favorite summer season. So every year since I was 18, I've done like six party seasons, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I've done like Ayanapa, Marbella, Magaluf, and then three in Ibiza. But Ibiza 2019 was like the best year for summer. And were you like a rap when you done the, the seasons? Like, is that like um, every year was sort of different. So I was sort of like a party promoter, sort of. Um, and it, and it, the every, first three years, I just sort of got paid to get pissed. Yeah, like I didn't really care about earning yeah. money. I was just like 18, 19, 20 and I was literally living in these places and just got a bit of money to survive off. But yeah, I could just free drinks and free entry to all the clubs and stuff. I didn't yeah. really care. But then, and it'd be for rocks for the past three years. That's where I worked. 
and yeah, it's good work there to be fair. What what is that like? Because I can imagine like you're drinking every day for like weeks and weeks. Like. Uh, the first few seasons, I definitely drank like every day. It was a big drinking culture, like um, Ibiza as well. You do party quite a lot, like. Um, this year, I try not to party as much because I'm trying to focus on my social media and stuff. And when you party, it just distracts you. But yeah, my, 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 I remember my first season at I but like it was my first time sort of fully in the nest. And I got like a one way flight by myself. It was my last day level exam that morning. And I just went tying up by myself that evening. I was like, fuck it, I'm out of here. <laughs> and I went and I literally was thinking back. And I was like, I was there for three months. And I think I drank for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. I just, I just put everyone was there just to party, and they're all like eighteen, and nobody had yeah. like any rules, and you're just like fucking go crazy. I always think like last day of my levels, we all did go out, like, but it wasn't like a, I'm gonna book a plane on my own one way and just. <laughs> you just want to do a I feel like I've. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've always wanted to travel. To be fair, like I've, I remember always thinking, like my uncle, um, he's like forty now, I think. He was traveling through his whole twenties and stuff, and I always just used to look at his life, and I was like, t- young teenager, being like, oh my god, I'm definitely wanting to travel when I go when I get older, and. Even like the last few years of school, like a lot of my friends would have been like in, in, in England for uni and stuff. So I would have went over all the time to go over to England, like by myself to meet them and go out and stuff. So I've always liked like exploring new places and stuff. And then when I was in England, this girl I met at a party was basically telling me about her doing seasons in Ayanapa. So I was like, oh my God, give me the details, I'm doing it. And then I just did it. And I think at that time as well, I was um, struggling to deal with like my sexuality and where I'm from and stuff like that there. So I was having a bit of a hard time. So I think I just wanted to like, sca- escape as well. Yeah. Yeah. So how yeah. was that like coming out, coming out in where's it you're from sir? in to a place called Lotmacrae just outside Oma. Um, I feel like I've blanked out a lot of this t- this time. You know, um, I, re- I had a, a really, I just was really really struggling mentally for like I think I played it up in my head a lot more than what it actually was as well. But I feel like yeah. I distanced myself from like because I went to an all boys school and I feel like. I, d- I got in my head that like everyone in school like didn't like me and stuff so I completely like distanced myself from everyone and just really struggled and like I didn't have any tools or like anything to help me like cope with it or whatever and um, so it was a bit of a shit like year and a half at school and then when I went to uni in Belfast I think I was more myself but I still was like struggling mentally but I got over it eventually yeah did you have a specific turning point or yeah when I, when I went traveling I like off those experiences and stuff that you had with the yeah. The ayahuasca, ayahuasca um, yeah. no 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 so I started it was way before that um, the ayahuasca sort of just helped me like with myself like more recently but um, the at the turning point was probably when I st- just when I started going travelling like I think it was my galoof from the first time and I just broke up with my ex I just like left uni all out there and it was yeah. just like that's it that's somewhere in my galoof I was partying all the time but I was also like an emotional wreck but I yeah. feel like I needed that time by myself to sort of heal a wee bit and then I went to Australia and I was completely on my own in Australia um, I was living on this cruise ship and because I was literally so on my own like I think there was there was barely even any English people on the ship it was all like people from like Africa and Asia and like South America and also I was kind of on my own um, so a lot of the time I'd be listening to like podcasts and audiobooks and stuff trying to like just I don't know just trying to learn about life and stuff and so that's where it sort of started and then obviously I went to Ibiza and then had the spiritual awakening and I think from that summer because I, I think that summer in Ibiza was the first time in my life where I was just completely myself didn't give a fuck and I was just loving every second of it. And I think from then, that's where it sort of turned. What yeah. would be your advice for people who maybe wouldn't be confident? Like, would you have any tools that you'd recommend? They wouldn't be confident? Yeah. In what, like... Just in themselves? Um, I would say 100% listen to... Or sort of, if you like reading, read. But if you don't like reading, like, I've struggled to read sometimes. Um, try and listen to some audiobooks, like self-development audiobooks. Like... You are a badass is a good one with confidence. That it really, really helped my confidence um, in sort of not giving a fuck. Um, there's just loads and loads of audiobooks, self help audiobooks and podcasts out there that I listen to that definitely things resonated with me. And yeah. I was like, fucking hell, this it stuff. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. Um, if not that, having a life coach really helps, I find. Um, I know there's sort of a stigma. I think it's getting better, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, it's, getting it's definitely getting better, yeah. but. There was like a stigma about having life coaches thinking that people who are only like really, really fucked up that needs like life coaches or therapists or whatever. But I personally think that every single person should have a life coach or a therapist because having someone to chat to just get your thoughts out and they'll help you understand your own thoughts. Exactly. Um, it really, really does have a positive impact on your life. What is like a life coach? Though? Um, so a life coach is just someone you sort of <clears throat> would check in with maybe every week. Just sort of, they go through, so when you first start, they would go through like their sort of course, maybe going through 
trying to figure out what things is maybe holding you back in life, say maybe childhood trauma, say maybe the fear of judgment, say maybe the fear of like, I don't know, just different things. Like they go through in detail, like asking you questions about your life and then things would come up that you wouldn't even think would like, like whenever I had a life coach, there was something holding me back from, I think from me succeeding and going further and it came up and I was like, oh my God, I forgot that happened. And he was like, yeah, that's that's probably what's holding you back. So then you work on that yourself and then you progress. Um, but yeah, you just sort of talk about different things. Is really. it similar just to like a therapist? Aye, more or less. Yeah, and yeah. actually they not. kind of help you plan out like things in your life as well. Yeah, they? yeah, they help you plan out stuff. Yeah. Aye, so. yeah. um, I'm actually not too sure about the difference, like what, because I've, I've only experienced my life coach, if that makes sense. Yeah. So. Do you feel like it's more about like talking and like they don't really talk to you, you just kind of talk and go through your own feelings and then they kind of give you tools to like deal with your... Okay. Word. Do you feel like when it comes to, I've heard like life coaching and stuff, that term being used do you feel like now especially with social media and stuff I, I, i'm maybe seeing it from that sort of over here's perspective but a lot of people doing it and they're getting stick for maybe not having their shit together if you know what i mean like a lot of people could jump on that bandwagon and be like i'm a life coach but they've no real like what sort of like training or whatever like behind them like um it, what people are saying they're life coaches but they're yeah, actually not like would you say like actual people who are professionals at that yeah. are being kind of tarnished by people who are just using that word as a kind of like oh well i've made a success of myself so come to my talk or come yeah. do this with me um, and i'll teach you how to be great i don't know i um, suppose maybe maybe people who have done like read books and like learned their own stuff and maybe done like a life coaching qualification i feel like if you're listening to them and you like understand what they're talking about actually like does make sense and um, maybe you could go to them but um, I suppose there is probably a difference in people who are actually like qualified. Yeah, but like the type of life coaching you're sort of touching on there is like financial life coaching. How yeah. to actually like, I see your, you see oh, a right, lot no, of, like, no like, like yeah, like, you see a lot of like motivational like speakers <laughs> and all like the ever, like yeah, everybody yeah. seems to be kind of jumping you need on to be that. in this mindset if you want to earn yeah set amount of money this year. Like. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure about that sort of stuff, to be honest. I just feel like whenever you say life coach, I'm thinking about them type of people. Where oh, no, I'm, like, my life coach is like, I'm thinking of like, more, of a more, more, like a, more like a therapist, more or less. Right, yeah. okay. That's my right, sort right. of perception of it. Because like whenever you say life coach, I'm thinking about people where it's like, come to my event and I'm going to teach you how to make a success for yourself in like 10 easy steps. Nah, 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 nah. You're thinking of like business. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, not even, but like people are using the word life now. Like that's that's how they're marketing it. Like it's, you want, it, you, you want to become a success in yourself and <laughs> I all do this get here. You, right? yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe I'm just getting confused in the whole thing, but like I see people advertising, they're like, oh, if you want to be a better self and like I know, I do see on business. TikTok all these people being like, I've made so much money. Like you have to oh, listen to me, stuff like that. Yeah. That's like, like to be good at business you need to work on yourself and all this here I scroll past them people to be fair I a certain person yeah, over but here not, like, <laughs> I know that's certain, not, not certain person but like there's people it's not just one person like but people are it's I think, like, who, this is like an inside <laughs> <laughs> it's not an inside you're thing by, you're by Tom Smith though. from the dream apartments yeah. Yeah. he hates me <laughs> do, you see the, do you see the TikTok I made about I've seen the TikTok you'd on the dream apartments one over there so he basically so I messaged them being like, here, this is what happened in Dream Apartments and he just completely aired my message. What's well, so you like called them out and were like, this is what went wrong? No, so I messaged him first and I was like, here mate, this is like, this is, I wa-. so basically I walked into the apartment, I was after AVA festival and I basically booked an apartment because I was standing in my brother's holy dance house and I was like, I need the fuck out of here. Um, mm. So I stayed in, I just booked the Dream Apartments and then I walked in and I was literally like a shithole, like the beds weren't made, there was dirty tissues everywhere, there was like open bottles and stuff, so it just hadn't been cleaned more or less. And I checked in late as well, like it was late in the evening. And then I messaged, or they sorted it anyway. And then I messaged your man, being like, here, this didn't happen. Because I don't usually complain about stuff. But my mates were like, definitely message him, see what, see what he says. So I messaged him. He aired my message. So then I just made a TikTok about it. And it obviously done all right. And then he basically messages me and was like, um, basically, I'll give you a free room, blah, blah, blah. So I was sorted. But then he seen me in Manchester Airport the other day and just just aired me. I was like, oh, I feel so awkward right now. <laughs> Why, what did he say? <laughs> he just, just didn't acknowledge I was sat there. I was like, I feel so really awkward here right now. But fuck it. That's awkward vibes, though. Yeah. 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 No, but, like, it's not, just, like, he is doing it, obviously, but, like, there's other people, like, I just think, like, do what you, do what you want, like, it's fine, like, but I, I know a lot of people get stick where it's, like, what qualifies you to give me advice on, like, mm. how to live my life and all this here. Um, I agree in some senses, but then other people, like, we were talking with Sinead Haig, like, she 
people she gets a lot of stick being like oh you're not qualified blah 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 but she has literally worked her ass off to learn all this stuff mm-hmm. and like i would listen to her like more than i would listen to proper qualified life coaches because yeah. she knows what she's talking about because of her own research and what she's learned yeah. herself she's like read so much about relationships so that's why i'm always so interested i did but have you heard her podcast with lisa mcfarland the relationship coach? yeah yeah yeah. i interviewed she her. messaged me the other day actually i love her but yeah. everything she needs says is like old to me like i just think she like she would be the best example of a life coach i think she I'd say I've been I've been following her since I was like sixteen. She was doing seasons in my life, so I've been like looking up to her since then. That's probably why I've started doing seasons and stuff. Um, and then I just she was probably a big help. She didn't even know who I was at this stage, but she was probably a big help in my like self development journey from whenever I had the spiritual awakening, whenever because I would have listened to her stories like on every single day, like listening to what she had to say. Yeah, that would help definitely. Yeah. she's an example of someone who's probably doesn't have the proper qualifications yeah, but, but knows reads, what she's talking about she's read a lot and like done a lot of her own research and i think she's talked to other mentors and stuff but mm-hmm. she's great like her podcast i listen to it all the time she's just put her Same. news in the night is that something you'd want to eventually do yourself or uh yes yeah, so i've actually bought a life coaching qualification um like course um, online so it's an open university or something mm-hmm. so that's my plan this year to actually f- find the time and actually learn to do it I, I don't think i'll actually do like life coaching as in like one-on-one but i'd like to learn everything that they have to teach you so yeah. have to have it on me yeah so you can maybe share it on my like social yeah. media and stuff yeah i suppose it's the platform you have already and stuff like and obviously people are following you because you're into that spiritual mm. yeah it would be good to have more of an insight and in how it works and stuff and yeah 100 sure. because i feel like i do i feel like i like sharing i like sharing those messages because then you get a lot of good feedback people being like yeah. oh you've helped me that's helped me that and i'm like yes class so i want to continue going down that route i think 100 percent. yeah so talk, talk to us a bit about the tiktok now the tiktok <laughs> what <laughs> or did it, well, it just blew up out of nowhere didn't it um i suppose what i will numbers like? uh i sort of i remember at the start of lockdown i was working in the butchers in asda because I had a, I was living in Miami and then I had to come home because of COVID. So I just got a job at home in Asda. And then I remember just listening to podcasts and stuff. And I was just thinking, like, what do I actually want to do? And then I remember thinking, the fuck I'd actually like to start maybe a podcast or a social media. And this was like, what, nearly two years ago now? And I had the idea, but I never like went for, no, went and done it. And then I went to Ibiza for, for the summer. And I ended up partying with like a lot of like influencers and like um, famous YouTubers and stuff. And I went for breakfast to these like famous YouTubers one day. And I was just like listening to their success and stuff. And I was like, this is my sign. I'm gonna fucking start it. So I came home and started TikTok, and then it done all right. I think I had like over seventy thousand followers at Christmas, but then my account was fucking banned. I was fuming, um, but I feel like everything happens for a reason. So if yeah. the account wasn't didn't get banned, I wouldn't have went to Mexico. But because it was banned, I was like, "Fuck, get me out of here." So I went to Mexico, and then I didn't really start back up until maybe like April or May, mm-hmm. and then I had a month off in the summer. But yes, more or less since then. What, then. Why do you think it was banned? I'd be so stupid. So obviously on Christmas Eve, I put up a, like a trend, and I at this because I just started TikTok, I didn't realize how serious the community guidelines were, and I put up a, put up a video of <laughs> me in the bath doing a trend, and I was like singing the song like really stupid, but like the bubbles were covering me. It was a funny video, but um because I was in the bath, gone. But I shit myself all day. I went on t- I went on my TikTok, and this notification came up. It was like your account has been permanently banned for breaking community guidelines. I was like fuck's sake, what, what now? Like and then I was, but I literally didn't do it. I think at all. Like I know I didn't because I'd be so careful now. Yeah. Um. And I put up my close friend's story and then I'm friends with this girl who's on Love Island. She was like, email these people. And I emailed this like guy who works for TikTok and I got my account back in like 20 minutes. So it was sweet, but I shit myself. But it's just because, like, can people like, say if people wanted to just be dickheads, like could they report your account? I think so, I. Yeah. I think it does happen. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You get a lot of dickheads out there. Like. I think that happened to, I seen it, you know, there's a Twitch streamer and it's a father and a wee son but the son's like five or six or something and i think someone like people were like were like reporting the wee guy's account and it got banned like live on a stream and he just started crying and stuff and the dad so was bad. pure ripping he was just like like why have you done this why did you do that like yeah. why have you done that just people being wee pricks like but people have nothing better to be out like no <laughs> that's really <laughs> you've you've called a lot of people out though which i think is quite i feel like there's a good side to that but there's also a bad side where if you focus a lot on that i feel like people yeah. can almost do it to yeah. beg you on so, so to be fair i've only called i've only really got, ever called out maybe like three or four but it's just if they're repetitive i'm just like i'm just gonna call you out if, if it's funny if it's gonna make a funny video i'll report it like there was some guy constantly giving me shit on my um there's some guy constantly giving me shit on my tiktok and i seen him and i was like 
why is he always commenting? So basically, call me ugly in one of the videos. So I reply. I went onto his profile and I was like, this boy's tied to his Instagram. So I went on his Instagram. He's he follows me on both. And I was like, I recognize him. So I clicked on the messages and like maybe like eight months beforehand, he'd message me on Instagram being like, oh, you're fire, bro. Watch your Snapchat. So I just ignored him. Didn't reply. And he's obviously oh. fuming. I didn't reply. So he starts trolling me. So I screenshotted everything and put it all on TikTok and blew up. But he was, he was fuming. But he messaged me like the other day and was like, mate, this is really effective. Please delete it. Everyone sent it to me. I was like, okay, I'll delete it. But I was like, just, I was it's like I hope you learned your lesson to stop trolling people like yeah, yeah. yeah I said that we had a similar situation a couple of months ago where we called some guy out for some shit and Ross went in pure detective mode and figured him out and all that and crap and yeah but what do you think about dealing with things like head on like that because I've seen one other video you done and I think you were coming out of a room with like seven girls or something behind you oh my god that video was not someone and someone commented on about the girls being ugly oh no as in as like, in that video i what it made me realize from that video is that girls probably get a lot worse than guys do even even i definitely yeah. get trolling quite a bit but girl i think girls get it even worse because that that video was 80 percent hate like yeah. on on the girls and i was like this is fucking nuts um but yeah people are just like i don't understand what, what's, what's wrong with people like but i saw you put a tiktok up about some story i can't remember but you're telling some story about a night out and then someone commented underneath um this is all lies and you goes no your your life's just boring yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah see to be fair uh they do i do like retaliate sometimes so if it's a cover like that i do retaliate sometimes i feel like when i'm hungover I definitely retaliated because I'm like fuck off. But <laughs> usually, yeah. usually I don't care. Recently, the past few days, I'm just like sick of it, so I'm just like blocking them all. I read that last night, and I was like, oh my god, like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of people, a lot of people do that though. If you say something and it's like interesting or whatever, they're putting like a like that emoji of the cap and all on yeah. it. You're just like, get like. That's that's one thing. This this one of the covers that really triggers me. I don't know why. I'm like, I literally don't lie. Like it's fucking annoying. Yeah. Like, yeah. But people say the only things that actually annoy me. Like people say, give me. A abuse say about my fucking receding hairline or like something that i actually possess or own myself like i'll own up to it i don't give a fuck say what you want but if someone's going against my character but it's a, not true like saying i'm a liar or i'm born or i just i mean like that i'm yeah. just like fuck off yeah <laughs> we had that with nico he was talking about like getting chased by like terrorists like so like he got one what was, where was it outside like yeah, Croatia? yeah no it's uh kurosawa, Wait, kurosawa. who is this Na you know Nico who does Pride, Pride and Opinion, Opinion watch guy. the I'm watch sure. expert no well he, he got chased by terrorists he had like this like Rolex watch there was only like four of them or something and he like chased and shot up by terrorists and all what trying to get the watch off him what in Croatia he went oh, over it was, it was Kurosawa, yeah, was Kurosawa or something but he went over there was it's a, I think it was like Rolex Pepsis which are quite like rare. Ex they're rare and they're expensive he went over to like collect three of them from this port while he was on holiday and on the way back from like the port to like the border area like people were chasing after him like shooting at the car and stuff that's not wise but people were commenting on the <laughs> <laughs> way he posted it on like on tiktok and all and it was done well like but he was like people were commenting going like oh things that didn't happen and like cap and all and then i think did you say on reddit or something or, like people were saying stuff and he was like responding and yeah all like he was like, a lot of because i think there was a reddit thing that started on him and chris Suter and then like other people which shall not be named in the podcast um <laughs> but um they were basically saying like oh they've started like life coaching and stuff like this whole thing about like you know and i don't think chris sitter does no, motivational does, speaking no. like chris sitter is just a full-time i think he just mad, does events like, like he's yeah. just yeah, like anytime <laughs> i've met him the amount of information he's thrown at me i'm just like what like he's just, i think he's just pure wired to the hilt where it's just like what what he's never happy like he's always like chasing that next thing if you know what i mean which is okay. fair but i don't think he's ever done like life coaching or anything he's nah. just very positive he's like mm. you know if he's on like instagram and he's like right what are you doing get up guy got it is this big thing and nico like nah. we asked nico on the podcast it was actually you asked him and his response was very blunt to you to the point where i was a bit like Oh, that was a bit of a blunt response. You asked him like, "What advice would you have?" And he success, literally just was yeah. like, "I don't have advice. Like, I'm like, don't look at me as a success. Like, I'm still figuring stuff out." It was a yeah. very mature response, That's but he did response, cut right? you yeah. like he, he yeah, cut he you completely like, off. Like, like, just like, for quitting. No, <laughs> no, no, I know. Like, Alicia was near in tears. Like, you cried, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but like, and then people were on being like, "Oh yeah, they've started doing all this on life coaching and all this here." And I think Nico responded and was like, and "He's like, oh, you come spend the day with me or some shit." And like, yeah come to the merchant and just like but come spend a day with me like 
Yeah. He definitely yeah. isn't promoting anything. Like, he wasn't giving any advice or anything. He was just talking about his own story, but he wasn't offering any advice to anybody. No. He was like, just do your... He was just said, work hard was his thing. And he was like, he works like 20 hours a day. He Fuck said. that. He only, sleeps, he only sleeps four Two hours. Mm. Well, see, work, yeah. It works his full 20 hours he's away. Isn't that that's what he hectic. Something like that, yeah. That's, that's the, a bit much like. Mine was just basically like, people are just anything there. They couldn't do themselves. Just like, oh, cap. Cap. Like. People love saying it. Do you know that guy who, who's saying as if? On TikTok, uh, think and he does like crazy it. shit. Like he was up to the riot place and done that there TikTok sound. He just does mad shit. Yeah. He basically records everything he does now because he says whenever he spoke about things before, and he does, he does crazy shit. Like I met him in Ibiza. It's a spider. It's, it's a fly floating about. Um, spider <laughs> fan. <laughs> I thought it was just a spider dangling from the ceiling in front of your face. I was like, how's all this going to take for him to realise? <laughs> but uh, he just does mad mad shit. Like he's like he's mental. Like um, but. He basically says he just records everything now because anytime he does anything mad and he doesn't have it recorded, everyone just calls him a liar. Yeah. So he just has to record everything. But believe it, you want to know. But the then truth. I would say, like, we had a guy, we had a guy in there, and the podcast will be like, it was pro- probably will be out your guy, Lee, and he records, he does like, he's in the guy. What do you call him, Julius? Julius. Uh, Lee, Lee Hutchinson? Yeah. 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 But like, he was showing us like vlogs and stuff, and like, we were like, oh, like, some of it is obviously like really exaggerated, but I would say people are seeing that and then not knowing where like the line is between like, oh, something actually mad has happened to me, mm. or like, here's what we're staging to make it look like that. So yeah. I would say people are just getting the lines blurred where now everything just seems like, oh, that rubbish. Problem. Yeah, oh, you know that's I mean? true. I never thought about it like that, to be fair. Yeah. Like I, I and obviously what you say the small town mentality things I think it's a big thing as well like we always talk about it on here like it's mad because we would all kind of have the same mentality we're just like let people do their thing like, exactly 100% like, what, what's the point in being hung up and whatever I feel like if you if you are from a small town my advice would just be to go travelling because travelling will get rid of the small town mentality one million percent yeah 100% yeah. Um, but yeah that small town mentality is definitely a very toxic thing that is big in Ireland I think yeah. I think it's great though because I look at people from school that I went to school with and a lot of them who were like really like shy or like unconfident and all this here and people who you wouldn't really afflict talk to or whatever I see them con- like going to uni and stuff now and like I follow them on Instagram and stuff and I like look at all their stuff and I'm like you're flying like you like you just seem to be loving life that is class. and they were the people who were pure you definitely wouldn't have thought Mm. you know they were just quiet and didn't want to like speak out or anything 100 percent. do you not think lockdown has done such wonders for people as well and bringing them out and making them realize they have their own like their own things their own endeavors yeah. and stuff like the amount of people who've opened up small businesses and started tiktok yeah. And, yeah. Media and all that like i loved lockdown for that and people like starting something new and having the confidence like to be away from people and to realize this is what i want to do i feel like it's i feel like lockdown me and my mom were having this conversation the other day i feel like the lockdown and this whole covid thing has definitely had a, a massive positive impact on a lot of people um, but it's also had a massive negative impact and effect on a lot of, on yeah. the other side of people yeah. as well so it's the other one one way or the other yeah. um I, th- I look at it and I think with online you're kind of putting yourself into that corner where like you your post videos that were doing stuff as well and it's just like you're you're allowing everybody to see what your life's like and a big one would obviously be David like Greedy Gwynn mm. like he was doing and everything seemed to be going so well with him for like the sweet business and stuff and now yeah. it's like he's shut it down and he responded to a comment where someone was basically like seeing this business fail and you feel has been the highlight of this year <laughs> And he was just like, right, okay. Like, <laughs> I just think he doesn't know what's going on half the time. He was just yeah. like, yeah, sweet, awesome, thanks, have a good day. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm like, like he's aired that, and like, yes, it, you, people. How many people start businesses and they f- they don't do as well as what they think? Well, and I mean. like his thing was, he was obviously sharing that, and now he's turned it in where it's like, right, I'm going to discuss how it went wrong where okay, it went wrong him. and he's answering things honestly. But I seen that to comment, and I was like, how low can you step where you're like? seeing your business Same fail has made me so happy <laughs> i had one of my worst trolling comments well it was a message the other day off an anonymous account and basically they messaged me off an anonymous account and was like i wish the i'll not say the name it's like a terrorist group from around here um still existed so they could bomb you and your family's house and kill you all and i was like fuck. what the fuck i showed my mum and dad i was like this people are actually just a different level of crazy yeah. like what is wrong with people that's crazy man. I think it's just because people think they have this on, 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 on I can't even say it. Anonymity. 
probably but they think they can just get away with this shit like what if it'd be so funny if fucking tiktok turned around like <laughs> i was, I was thinking so hard, <laughs> like in next week or something and i'm released everyone's name like oh no <laughs> it'll probably be people God you know yeah. Yeah. no it'll probably yeah. be people you know i think you'd be very surprised though. i've seen a cause before where they're literally like control it and they only follow me and they have no followers no likes or that and so i'm like this is definitely someone that i know or something just like awesome. they've made that a comment <laughs> just a comment and then they never use it again. definitely it's so sad like. the one the one thing that i've found recently that i laughed i laughed quite hard at was the one you made with your guy i follow him as well he's so funny that hello Oh, Bartosh? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I love right him. About the seat. Oh my god, yeah. He commented but, as well. He was like, I'll blow a fart into that seat or something. Because <laughs> I was pretending to be a seat him sitting on my face. <laughs> but you know the That's guy, he's like, hello. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, he's class, I love him. Little ho. <laughs> he's so funny. I think he's like my favourite TikToker. He's just so funny. He's just so simple. Yeah. Well. He's just funny. I think it's like a character. I don't know if you actually know if he's like that. I think he's smart. Yeah. I feel like he's smart. But like he, he done that one around. where it was like someone coming up to him and was like, "Are you the hello boy or oh something?" Yeah, he was like, "Yeah," and he was like, "Get out of my face!" <laughs> 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 it's funny, like. But I feel like we we're gonna go on the different. I think some of the TikToks I seen you thought was quite funny is like the ones you talk about like being a night out and like, like boys with girlfriends coming up to you and nights out and all. Oh and yeah, that happened in Croatia. So I was at the festival in Croatia, and. I, this boy comes up to me and he's good looking and stuff and he was like we were like talking over and then we started like getting we sure and then like when and like went and we're getting we sure for a while and i was kissing him he was like oh we need to stop and i was like why and he was like my girlfriend stood right there she was literally at the top of the <laughs> stairs i was like what so he like ran up to his girlfriend and then they were like sat with each other like where our group was so me and my mates were just like dancing in front of them like what the fuck it's so weird like but did she know then no she, she, she didn't have a clue. Off. She didn't see it. But I made a TikTok about it and got like a million views. So she might have seen it by now. Like, yeah, that's what. But so that's what you were doing down there. <laughs> <laughs> but Flatters. the you wanted to talk about the you've been quite open about. I seen you at the start with the spray for your hair. Oh, the hair, I yeah, yeah. that one. That, like I was on like was it on like American TV? I was on. It was on E News in America because I didn't realize it was on E News. So basically, I've got like a big receding hairline, and then. I just remember I was like fuck I'd try this one day and then I started like spraying the hang and it actually made my hair look so like fuller so I was like right let's keep doing this and then when I started TikTok I was like fuck this would actually do alright in TikTok so I put it up anyway and it blew up and then it was a uh, next thing this guy randomly messages me on Instagram like a message request and was like you were on like my favourite channel in America tonight and I was like what are you on about because I just thought it was like a, like so you get weird messages like yeah. I saw some by chatting shite Bang and he's like oh, trying to sell you I, so <laughs> like, I was like what's he, what's he all about and then I was like, I was like, all oh, a video and send it to you later, and I was like, right, okay. Next thing was like a full on chat show on E News at like prime time TV talking about like my receding hairline. I was like, what the fuck was bad us? Uh, but I went all over. It was in Australian news and stuff. As would well. you say that's one of the video? Like, would that have been one of your first videos? The proper blow up, like, like. It um, went really I that big video was probably my most viewed video. I think it's got like five million views. I think that's probably my biggest one. And did you did you get like credit and all from anyone? No, like, they, I didn't even know it was on it. Like. That's what I was thinking. I was like, should I get money for that or something? But never got anything. Probably even for promoting like the spray that you used. <laughs> <or even laughs> I like. did. I messaged. I messaged them. And they just aired it. Messaged. Seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dogs, like, all the money but now I've got them, like. fake hair. So how does that? That's that. Funny enough, right? You done the video and it was like shaving the front of your head. Yeah. And I remember watching it and I said to my girlfriend, I was like what happens whenever like his hair will eventually like grow back and mm. then literally about like a couple of weeks later you done the one where you were shaving like the front of your head I was like there's the answer to my question yeah. but like it looks I thought oh my god I hope he doesn't walk in and I notice it and I'm like that looks fake but like I must admit I don't I don't even know it like yeah. it looks genuinely yeah like, I think it's a bit long and I, did, I got this new one on like two days ago so I need to like trim it a bit but he's gawking at it, it. <laughs> okay. how does it work though like does it do you, do you take it off like or like does it stay on all um, the time or like what I so you basically stick it on and what I've noticed is every like maybe just under two weeks you have to sort of take it off shave the bit underneath and then just glue it back on and then yeah. you just keep doing that every like two weeks but it's, it's fine like so is it the same is it the same bit like is there what do you have to change so it's the, it's the same bit but then you get a new one say it just depends so my first one i think i messed it up a bit because i was styling my hair too hard and i was wearing hats all the time and um, because i just like wearing hats but you're apparently not meant to wear hats so the first one lost a lot of hair too early so i'm gonna look after this one a bit more but yeah. it usually should last three four months um, and get a new one every three four months yeah but like does it always stay on like do you shower with it on and all yeah yeah it stays on the whole time yeah, like. that's something i just wanted to know like what way does it work do proper you, glued on like do you that's notice mad, it like do you know do you notice it's like is it the equivalent of like say wearing a hat or um, wearing something when you like i can't feel it i can't feel it on my head at all unless the only time i can feel it is if 
I'm sweating, which I'm nervous about going to Bali for because when you're sweating, it gets a bit itchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't notice at all. I didn't actually know that about you. Yeah, it, it's not noticeable at all. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's, it's never fallen off. It'll from tactile no, sweat or anything. Like, or just no, no, no. The only time... It's secure there. Towards maybe... When, towards the time that you have to change it, maybe like say after like two, three weeks, you can notice it starts sliding down a yeah. wee bit. But that, you, that, you just rip it off and stick it back on again. So it's fine. And what like what made you go for that instead of like the likes of a heart transplant? Because I feel like um, that's what you got is something like I have never really heard of. Like, because I hear a lot of people talking about heart transplants, but I've never yeah. really seen See, to be it. fair, I was considering getting a heart transplant, but then obviously that video blew up, and I had loads of different companies messaging me to do this here. Yeah, and I was like, you know what, I may as well try it if I'm getting paid for it. So I was like, you know what, I'll give it a go, and I actually love it. So yeah, it looks good. Though. But I'm nervous about when I go to ballet because I don't know if it'll work well in the heat. So we'll yeah. see what happens. The but hair transplant thing though is it not a bit more like intense? Because I know your guys. The fuck out of me, I know your guy Zian uh, that's in David Dobrik's vlogs and stuff. Like he got a hair mm. transplant, and like his face pure swole up and everything. Yeah, yeah, my friend got his done the exact same time I got this hair done. And he said it was the worst pain he'd ever been through. Like he's got full body oh, tattoos, and he said, wor- "Say, get, he says, get the worst tattoo pain, and times about a hundred. He said they stick a needle like the size in the back of your head. Yeah, it's just horrible. I've watched so many videos on it. Like the size of the back. Of your head. I, so that's what happens. They like pull all the like, individual hairs out the back of your head and then implant it into the front of your head. Fuck. But to say like the worst part is like you have to get so many like injections on your head to numb it. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah, that's like the name so proper goes into like your like near touch in your skull. Oh. They like, wouldn't knock you out for that, no. They don't no, they don't knock you out. out. That's what I was saying. I was like, well, please just knock me out. Like, yeah. it's like proper, like I think it's like eight hours, it's like a full day. Like you go but in, like, like people go abroad and all for them because it's cheaper. It's yeah, like, sure. Like, turkey, I so a turkey company messaged me the other week to to see what I do, but obviously I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to give this a go first, mm-hmm. but. Yeah. Um, but yeah. is Turkey the place to go if you're wanting it done? Like? I think it's quite common for people to go oh, there. Is everything yeah. in Turkey? That's just it's a, a lot of people there, go like for the teeth. It's, a lot, ch- it's yeah. a lot cheaper over there than it is in like England. Like Why like specifically England Turkey? Why not like it's just, Germany? They just do it. Like, it's I, just cheap. I think they're cheap with a good service. Mm. Oh. I've heard a lot of horror stories as yeah. well though. Yeah. 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 There was there was guys, there was people from Belfast died from doing their teeth there, wasn't it? Yeah. When was that? My uncle was telling me about this. They went to his school. Might have been a few years ago, like, but and what happened there? Like just infection or something? There was the three of them, I think, or something. Went with their teeth and something I think I don't know what happened, but he was telling me the story, I think he told me a few weeks ago. And they they died from it. But people go and get like the gas is it the gastric bands as well? Yeah. Like the thing where they like tie a bit of your stomach so you don't yeah. get as fat but you hear so many horror stories about things like that because i'd like to get yeah. my <laughs> lip filler but i've heard like it migrates it can migrate to like down to your chin and stuff really yeah like filler and stuff so i was listening to olivia Day's podcast last night yeah, she, she, I, was, yeah. she was talking about that she's putting botox on her yeah. lips instead i think it dissolves. that's what everybody's doing now yeah everyone's getting their lip filler dissolved and then getting botox here i've right? got botox on my forehead have you yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can't see because of hair that, right now what was that like then it's fine it's you barely, barely feel it at all did you get that on here Nah, some girl in Manchester done it. Oh, okay. I think it is becoming so much more common to get stuff like that done now, though. Like, Botox is fine, I think, because Botox just dissolves. Like, it doesn't have any effect in your face when you're down the line, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. It's not like actual, like, filler surgery or anything. I think that was one thing we did talk about one time. It's like, there was a time where it was, like, you'd wear makeup and stuff, but, like, Botox and fillers and stuff are just becoming mm. as normal as, as, like, wearing makeup. 100% like, die. Mm-hmm. Most girls have probably had filler and stuff yeah. in their lips and that. Do you think it will continuously progress and progress? Um, no, I think there's a I think there's a down increase in it because obviously a lot of like celebrities and influencers like say like Molly May, she's yeah. a big one. She had loads of filler and she's got everything dissolved. So I feel like the more natural looks coming back in. I feel like yeah. a lot of girls are getting stuff taken out now. Like the yeah. Kardashians, we yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting their BBLs reversed. Are they? Yeah, I don't well, even know that. They're what? Saying. What's a BBL? Like a big Brazilian butt lift. Yeah. So they take <laughs> like fat from your belly and put it in your ass. Right. So I'm saying like the big fuck? asses are out now. It's like all oh, like uh, people aren't doing that anymore because they've got their their asses have got like way smaller. All the crashes. I think like something new every day. Go to extreme though, like, <laughs> like with the filler and stuff. I feel like it really did go a bit like out of hand. Like I think even when we went over to England and stuff, you noticed like so much people had like lip filler and stuff. Like. Mm. Yeah, whenever I first started doing seasons, obviously I was friends with a lot of English people. I think I think England always a wee bit before yeah. Ireland and everything. We um, follow like a couple. Yeah. Of so, after, so when I was in England or when I was in the beef for my first season, I remember just uh, all the girls would, like filler like everyone. Um, but yeah, then yeah. I, like in Ireland, there was not that many people I knew about it. 
Yeah, but even though like the hair transplants and stuff, I think it's becoming like a lot more people are just like more open about it and stuff. And like, have you had like many people message you about? Loads. You got, yeah. Like about this, it was more about the spray, but I've had loads recently about the actual hair paste. People are going to it, but whenever I don't like whenever on the spray thing, like loads of people, I did I was actually shocked because I didn't think anyone would actually do it. But boys and girls would be coming up to me and being like, like look at my hair. I'm like, what the fuck? As if you've actually like listened to that, man. Yeah, yeah. So cool. It'd be good. Uh, it must be a good feeling to know, like, because I would say a lot of people would find that, especially guys, because guys are guys. They'll find that really like a sensitive topic. Mm. If you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to get that tongue. I don't want the lads thinking like I've sprayed. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if you're spraying sense. something on, like people are gonna be like, oh, fuck you're, it. you're weird for doing that. If you know what I mean? So it'd be good to know that you're actually like making people like more confident. If yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it must be a good feeling. Like, I don't really give a shit. I just share whatever. <laughs> fuck Has it. Even a moment that someone's come up to you and it's been like really surreal. Like, do you get people noticing you and stuff? Yeah, I, yeah, good recently I and like especially around here, especially around like Belfast and that I get like recognised quite a bit. But I just think it's a bit of crack. Like these people, there's a few people like just want to chat as friends. Like I love it. Yeah. It's nice, do you know what I mean? Um, I had what I had a few. I had one. I was at the Telegraph building, and this guy came up to me and was like more or less like start like getting really emotional and gave me a hug and said that I've had like such a positive impact on his life and all. I was like, what the fuck this is this mad? I was there. I was about to cry. I was like, fuck it was I was a nice one to be fair. Um, but yeah. I think that would be so surreal, like someone coming up to you and knowing you, and like you're just doing it from your own house or whatever, and then people like so many people are seeing it. Yeah, it's fun. Like I like it. It's good crack. Like so, what is your what is like your plan then moving forward? Obviously, you're moving to Bali and stuff. So like, are you just wanting to try and expand like social media and like become bigger on that or like um, sort of? Yes. Yeah, so I suppose I sort of just want to. I definitely want to just work on myself and my knowledge to do with like mental health and all that their sort of stuff so then i can share the messages with as many people as possible and um, but yeah i definitely just want to keep continuing growing i've started youtube i haven't uploaded yet but i just want to keep continue growing and building sort of like a community on all my platforms and just help people live their best lives and try and get as many people as possible to open their minds and to live life with their true selves yeah and just keep working on that i think yeah and um, what would be the point where you think you'd turn around and say to yourself like i've not done it but like i've I'm doing well here. Um, have you reached that point already? I don't really think too much into that sort of stuff. I'm more of a person where I sort of try and just live in the, the each day by day, and hopefully things just continue to keep growing and mm -hmm. be, uh, continue to be more like successful in a sense. Um, but yeah, I just try and keep things day by day. I don't really, I don't yeah. really think of like right. This is the pinpoint because I don't really want to put my happiness or like my success in a destination. Yeah, just my, once success to me like, is being happy in the present yeah. moment. So that's what I said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> motivational quote earlier I was like it's not about getting to the destination it's about the journey there yeah my wallpaper nice. on my phone I made a wee vision board and it says <laughs> that's literally what I said <laughs> all we have is now he said to me he's like he said that quote and he goes you've definitely got that in a wallpaper on your phone like. no I made that up <laughs> <laughs> I invented that she's like coin that <laughs> make that an NFT you see um, and with the podcast like who would be like your dream guest to get on fuck dream guest yeah oh that's a good question. Um, I've got quite a few good guests in mind, but dream guests, as in like I could name anyone. Like anyone, like why, who would you want to be on why? Like if you messaged them and they replied, you'd be like, oh shit. Um, let me see. Let me see. It's flat. Uh, Line up's not too bad already. I'm not going to give any away. But. Um, I would right. say Farron Cotton or Vex King. Just because I love both of their work, like oh, I'm obsessed yeah. with both of their like books and like podcasts. Fern and Cotton's like podcast, good. I love it. Who's Would the you other guy? Watch Essex? Are you thinking of someone else? Who are you saying? Oh of? fuck, I'm thinking of Fern McCann. <laughs> <laughs> Big Fern McCann fan. User about to hit it off. <laughs> 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 oh, no, it's like, I love Only Essex. <laughs> <laughs> I used to lord over that show. So oh, good. Oh, yeah. Essex and fucking Mark right now. I never watched it. <laughs> <maybe. laughs> I've learned something new about him now. Oh I loved it. it was See, he's on um, Joey Essex on Australian I'm a Celebrity at the minute. Really? He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's funny. He's literally Mr. Like, reality TV show. Like, yeah, he's class. Know. That's what I think of. I feel like Bartosz is like a TikTok Joey Essex. A wee bit. Yeah. In yeah, a way. I get what you're saying. Yeah. When he came on, was it the, that clip that went viral from going on like with Holly and... Um, um, what's he called the one that you always say I look like Willoughby Phil Phil yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't forgot his name but then he was just like he was saying about his age and he was like oh I'm a 33rd year and they were like no you're not and he was like yes I am and then they thought about it and he was actually oh, right, well, yeah, he, was right he, was I. Like, he was just like bosh knowledge oh, yeah. <laughs> he's so he's so like just just so himself like yeah, but if you could recommend like one place 
they like uh, you've been to tons of places and i feel like it's a good way to sort of wrap this up like if anybody listening now said where is like one place out of all the places you've been to that you'd be like you need to go uh tulum mexico right yeah. and why um tulum mexico is absolutely stunning like it's one of the most beautiful places i've ever seen but it's also everyone there has just got such good vibes or such good energy there and um, there is a little bit of crime but you'll be fine um but also the best parties in the world like see these jungle raves you literally leave your phone before you go and you go you get a bus into the middle of the jungle no phones nothing and you're literally surrounded by like unbelievable holograms with like trees and like water and you feel like you're in the avatar movie like i've never seen anything like it in my life like i was just like in all the whole night and like mm-hmm. unbelievable DJs as well so best parties um, best beaches in you know, the jungle and there's so much exploring to do as well I think your boy Lee said that as well didn't he yeah. about Tulum did he, 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 he was there he lived in Mexico then, for like a year yes, so yeah, he was there I think when I was there I lived there for five and a half months fuck he said about like a guy like came on and all with like a machete <laughs> oh, that's oh really like have you ever had anything like, like I never had any scary experiences in Mexico but a few of my mates have had scary experiences so one of my mates was a shot girl in one of the restaurants and obviously there's like cartel wars and stuff because Tulum's getting a lot more like popular so different cartels from different parts of Mexico are coming in to try and take over the land to sell drugs or whatever and one of, one of my mates was working in a restaurant as a shot girl and her friend was this Brazilian girl like a 23 year old Brazilian girl but I think the pay for the waitresses and stuff is really shit mm. so she was selling drugs on the side like thinking she'd be fine the cartel walks into the restaurant in the evening time the restaurant's full of people and just shoots her head off in front of everyone in the restaurant and she my, my mate was like she's a girl from england she was like what the fuck hiding under tables and all this fucking nuts what? but um and my other, a few of my friends seen like dead bodies who'd been shot like at the side of the road and stuff but i'd never seen anything like that i felt safe to be honest That's yeah. cool. um i was on for it then you said all that and i'm a bit <laughs> <laughs> no i think i think if you're obviously you're gonna be a tourist you're not gonna be mixed up in fucking drugs and cartel like yeah. are you no, yeah. Shay out selling <laughs> really, uh, <laughs> crush balls my, my, aunt, <laughs> vending. my aunt and uncle went to mexico for their honeymoon like and they were saying it's unreal but they like stayed in this unreal hotel like resort and they said like you wouldn't really leave it without someone from the resort like taking you somewhere where was she staying though i can't think of the name cancun. I, I see cancun the resort cancun, maybe. Was it cancun? but i was t- i've been to i we stayed in Cancun as well and we literally explored everyone we were fine and we've been told but that the resorts tell you not to leave the resort because they want you to stay in the resort to spend money yeah well, that's a good point mm. then um, but, <laughs> and that <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, yeah no, pe- I think I think it'll be fine, honestly. As long as you don't get into like the proper slums. Like we went to Mexico City, and when I was in Mexico City, that was the only time I felt a bit like fucking wee bit mm-hmm. scared here because there's so much beggars and they like harass you. And then this guy we met from Mexico was like, it's like, got a map out and he was like, right, you just can't go here, you just can't go here, you just can't go here. And we we're like, why not? And he was like, if you so I was with two girls and he was like, if you three stepped into this area within a minute, you'd be murdered. You two be kidnapped and raped, and all your stuff would be stolen. And he was like, and he was like, and he was like, it's not even a chance that would happen. There's a hundred percent chance that would happen if you went to that area. And we we're like, right, okay, it's fucking. Mad though that like people, because sure, your guy, you guys, we had two degrees on, and they were saying they went done like touring in like america hmm. and they booked an airbnb and the taxi driver like took them up to the airbnb and was like are you staying here and they were like yeah and he was like no you're not and like drove them off but it was like an apparently like the middle of like the hood like what the hood oh really and like yeah. he was like if you two white boys yeah. got in here and stepped into that room like you definitely would have all your stuff stolen and probably murdered like oh my god but like he drove them off. he was like like if, it, if that taxi driver hadn't have drove us off we would have just went in there like two boys with guitars from yeah. flipping he says yeah. like to do like fake airbnbs where like you'll go in and leave all your stuff and leave and then when you come back all your stuff will be gone like, that's hectic that, yeah, mm. it's mental, yeah that's fucked up you need to definitely do your research and them sort of things yeah. google that we're so sheltered here in Northern Ireland <laughs> makes it sound, seem like such a lovely I know. I know I, like, I love coming home to be fair <laughs> nice. the, the worst version of Northern Ireland is probably standing in the middle of Belfast and someone goes yeah over at here. <laughs> you're not gonna get I was walking like through Belfast all the week and I was hung over and like loads of these like we like I think they were like maybe late teenagers but they're all like smicks started shouting my name and I was like I don't know if they love me or hate me like I could get jumpy all these wee boys here I was shit myself <laughs> <laughs> I was like fuck <laughs> Battle the cartels in Mexico, but I'm <laughs> worse than the fucking <laughs> Mexican <laughs> <Belfast>. <laughs> What's the scariest experience? I was outside Tim Hortons or something. Uh, the just <laughs> outside Stradivarius. They just flipped and caught me. And Mexicans are machetes. Go have a look in. Like. I was in Rome there the other day, and um, 
there's this man came up to me and he was trying to sell me something and then he got into a big conversation with me. I was like, I'm from Belfast. And he was like, my dad's from Belfast. He definitely was wasn't. He, fuck? he definitely <laughs> wasn't. And he was like, I've just had a new baby today. Like, <laughs> <laughs> his, his own screen. And um, he was like, so give me money. And I like, I gave him money then because I was so like. Oh <laughs> was he, was he? I, who he imagined? gave me like braces and everything. He was like, no. Oh, no, they, they. Me money you have to run baby. away from them. I was in Rome a few months ago and you have to run away from them. Like, they yeah. harass you. Like. He harassed me. And then I gave him a tenner. This was in Rome. A tenner? <laughs> that nearly cost you more than your flight. Like, give me money. Where was this? Was it near the Coliseum? Uh, it was at the Coliseum. Right, so that's they're all everywhere there. <laughs> like they harass you there. Like they don't leave you alone. I got so many roses as well. They all <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine Leisha coming back with like seventeen hundred bracelets on each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Rohan, my boyfriend, he can't say no to people. And everything. <laughs> Rose for her, and he's like, yes, yeah, so I had like ten roses. I know my friend was with me, and like they never really, they don't really travel that much, so like they didn't know like to expect yeah. this. And I was like, they were like going up to him, and I was like, no, we're not fucking speaking to that person. Like let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be aware this of him. I did not look like his dad from Belfast. Like, I know what you mean. I know what it is. I know. <laughs> Of first you're on about. My first time on holiday was Majorca and we'd done the same thing. It was a rose and the girl was came over to me and said, like, Rose for the lady and I said, Oh cheers, thanks and handed listen and listen and just went thanks and handed it back to her was like walk on. Like you, you didn't know, have a clue. Like, so educated, <laughs> like, but she was just like and I was like, What does she mean? What does this mean? And listen, just handed her back the rose. I was like, Would you just walk on and just don't speak to anybody? <laughs> I'm giving you these bracelets for free. He was like, These are for free because it, my dad's from Belfast and then it was give me money for my baby and I was like, Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, they're hectic to be fair. Like, yeah. but now they're you have to you have to be used to them and it's sort of people by now. By the be end, wary. I was just like just walking past. I think Rome's quite bad for pickpocketing as well. That's another thing about Mexico. To be fair, every single one of us was robbed at, at a point. Like I, all the all the guys I was with, every single one of them had their phones stolen at like the raves. Someone would take out their back pockets and stuff, and then me. I booked like an event on my card, and the girl who was like, it's like a proper company. She obviously, uh, she, when she was asking for my bank details to pay for everyone's tickets, I was like calling them out, and then I was like, after the call, I was like, I think I give her too much information there. And then next thing, she'd basically use my card and done loads of online shopping. Oh. <laughs> and like spent loads of money, but that I will. That sounds great. We should all go. <laughs> it's honestly, honestly, whatever I say, all this bad stuff, but it is my favorite place in the world that I've been so far, and definitely should go for a wee visit. If I can't go to Rome, I definitely can't go to Mexico from, <laughs> from the sign. No, you won't. Keep, nobody will come up to Mexico. Nobody really does. I don't think. You're just too generous. I genuinely think if someone come up to you, if we walked outside here and someone come up to you and was like, "I have just had a baby, give me twenty quid," you'd be like, "Yeah, let me go to the cash machine." You just, you know, just, you just know, know yeah. that he has that home screen. It's probably a baby. Probably looked up baby Google Images. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think about it. Actually, I don't he think they shopped his face onto the top of someone else. Like, <laughs> my, my child. Hi, <laughs> here you are, like. Um, but now, now I think about it. There's not many. There's not many people come up to you and like ask for money where I was in Tulum. The only people that come up to you is like the cartel asking if you want to buy any drugs. But that's about it. But they're they're sound like they don't do anything unless you're you know, anything bad. Unless you're dying. Dead. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yes, you say please. yes. <laughs> oh my God! Back. She joins the cartel. <laughs> I accidentally ended up in a fucking cartel cave rave after a festival. <laughs> so basically, I went to this festival called Zamna, right? And always with all my friends, but I'm always like last person standing, and my friends like they always like going home early enough so i ended up staying at this festival with this girl i met from america i think she's from like new york or somewhere so me and her ended up staying up together anyway but she basically got the address of this like after party and this is at like 10 a.m in the morning and we were like right let's go to this after got the dress went it was like 40 minutes outside tulum we got to these big gates in the middle of the jungle no phone service or nothing and we were like where the fuck are we knocked in the gate anyway and this like guy was like who sent you and then she she gave the name he was like right come on ahead in so we walked down it was like in the middle of the jungle into this cave and we walked in and we were like oh my god are we in the middle of a fucking cartel it was these big massive like mexican guys with like loads of like 18 year old mexican girls like sitting on their knees smoking cigars and all and they were just all everyone was just staring at us like staring oh my god. and we were like what the fuck and then this guy comes up and um, i was like oh do you want to buy some of this and we were like no we're right and it was like you're you're buying some of this like and we were like right okay so we bought whatever he was trying to sell us and then we were like we had one drink and we we're like we need to get the fuck out of here like it's really i felt so scared and then we left and got back out and we were like we're in the middle of the jungle no foreign service we can't get a taxi what the fuck are we gonna do so we started walking and then these like mexican farmers were driving past and we just hopped in their boat but they didn't speak english and they just dropped us off in this random town we had to catch a bus back to back to where we were. that's like a movie <laughs> recipe no no like it's, it's like you don't get into like looking back you take the up in the jungle in the cave and you end up in like america you've like smuggled <laughs> over the border <laughs> <laughs> smuggled in america you just come out this cave and there's this like cowboy standing there you're like where are we here in texas oh my Right, no, like, <laughs> where did funny. you even come from? Uh, that rock over there. 
<laughs> oh no, I was fucked. Did you ever watch Sicario? The they one? go with like yeah. Sicario. No, it's like that. a film about how they get drugs from like Mexico, but like they uh, use all these wee like tunnels, like yeah. and they're like specifically they come out of like the bottom of these like red cars just randomly parked in the middle of the desert in America. Like that's how they get from like Mexico to America. But that's mad. Yeah, I could just imagine you like resurfacing now as some like <laughs> tree hole in the tree or something. You're like, where are we? <laughs> that would have been mental, honestly. But no, definitely go to Mexico. <laughs> But like, I, no, what, it's just the way you get yourself in them positions. Where like, what if you turn around and say, like, "Not here, we're out," and they're like, "No, you're not. Like, you're staying forever. You just <laughs> big you AK forty sevens or some shit." I don't even fucked. I don't know. The story you told on your TikTok the other day about you, you were kissing some boy in a nightclub, and then you text another boy with the same name, thinking you were with him oh the whole God. night, and then you text another oh. boy to come to the after party, and it wasn't even the same boy. It was boy wasn't even out. No, this gave me the fear. Like, <laughs> it actually gave me the fear. So. I was out in Belfast and I was like, it was a few days after the Cambo and you're apparently not meant to drink for a week after taking Cambo and it was like three days later and I was literally black out, like I can barely remember anything and I was out and I was kissing this guy um, and not say his name obviously, I was kissing this guy but I was like, I couldn't really remember his name and then I went to an afters and one of the guys knew his name so I was like, oh, that's that. I have him on Instagram so I started messaging the guy but it was a guy, with, it was like another gay guy with the same name who kind of looks a wee bit similar but not really <laughs> and then I was like, I'll oh, come to this after so he came to the after and I was, he arrived just chatting away like vibing thinking it was the guy that I was kissing online it was literally a completely different person who has literally got a, has got a boyfriend as well he just came for the afters for the crack and I was like, what the fuck <laughs> I was like, how did this happen? I was like, I'm not drinking oh again God. that was the last time I drank I suppose when you go somewhere in Belfast now, you're like setting the bar high, you're walking in going, it's nothing like the cartel cave. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Where's the guns? <laughs> I know, that's really like. But we'll maybe end that there because that camera's died, that camera's just about to die, so I don't want to talk anymore and then we don't get it on camera and then it seems wasted, if you know what yeah. I mean. But um, thank you so much for coming on. Well, you're going yeah. to Bali now, so Next week, I. if you're looking them on a podcast, you'll not get them. We've got them <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going tonight. <laughs> that was bad too, but I'm gonna go next week. Sweet, sweet. But have fun. <laughs> I just picked on. Have fun. There. <laughs> what? Say it on. Go on. But no, good luck at it and like, keep posting stuff on TikTok. Like, this is good crack. Like, cheers. Thank nice you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, keep, do, keep doing your thing. Like, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, pleasure. Life Sucks. coach Evans here. <laughs> 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 You're doing your thing, bro. <laughs> oh my god.